Welcome to Early Medieval Embroidery. I'm Alexandra Makin and today I'm going to talk you through the processes involved in stitching the halo on the Cuthbert Manipal recreation project. Uh, but firstly, I must apologise if the close-up is not as clear as previous videos. It was filmed on my old camera which didn't have HD. This video is being shown at twice the original stitching speed. So the section that will be complete at the end of it took approximately 30 minutes. The halo is stitched by couching gold threads of 0.2mm diameter onto a ground fabric of silk. And this ground fabric has 64 threads to the inch. The silk thread couching stitch forms a zigzag pattern as you can see in the diagram. The first row sets out the pattern by counting out the position of each stitch over set numbers of ground fabric threads. At the end of each row, the gold thread is bent, ready to start the next one. In order to achieve a sharp, precise bend, it is folded round the needle. The second row is harder to couch because the stitches are worked in between the horizontal threads of the ground fabric and over every fourth vertical thread, thread only. These stitches have a tendency to not sit at the correct angle and need manipulating into position. The third row forms the last row of couching stitches works in the top left to bottom right direction in this repeat of the zigzag pattern. Using tweezers to push the threads into position helps keep the spacing of the gold threads and the couching stitches. It also means you can tweak the couching stitches if they're not lying quite right. The next row was awkward 
because it was worked over the vertical threads only in the ground fabric and it started the next section of the repeat pattern. So the diagonal line would lie from top right to bottom left. You can now see the couch zigzag pattern emerging. The turn of the gold thread at the end of each row is precise, but sometimes it slightly covers the brown stem stitch outline. This isn't a problem because when the gold is flattened, it is possible to slip, the, slip it underneath the stem stitch slightly and therefore creating um, a neater edge. You can now see I've established a working rhythm and my stitching pace has quickened and this is because I'm not only counting the threads of the ground fabric but I can see where the next counting stitch should be placed. However, if I lose the rhythm, I slow down because I need to concentrate on counting the threads of the ground fabric again until I get into the visual hand-eye rhythm back. And um, maybe I should explain what couch and stitch actually is. This stitch is when a thread is brought up on one side of another thread, in this instance gold, taken over the top and to the back of the work on the opposite side of where the stitch was started. The couching stitch holds the other thread in place and can be worked in lots of patterns. Although today, most people tend to use a pattern called bricking um, which, when finished, looks like rows of bricks in a wall.
you can see that placing the last stitch in a row is sometimes slower. This is because I'm angling the needle beneath the stem stitch outline and I don't want to catch the silk thread. Here you can clearly see that I bring the needle to the front of the work on the side furthest away from the previous row of gold. This is so that I don't damage the gold thread already couched in place. I lift the gold thread slightly when I bring the needle to the front of the work um, when I make each couching stitch because it helps me see the placement of the needle and I'm less likely to catch the gold in the same process. Here the tweezers come in handy for positioning a couching stitch, tweaking the gold in place and pushing the bent gold at the end of each row slightly underneath the brown stem stitch outline. But you can see that by doing that I've actually lost my stitching rhythm and I need to get back into that zone again. So now I'm slotting in rows of couch gold thread around the top of the deacon's head. I'm making sure there will be no ground fabric visible once it's all finished, but also that the gold and the zigzag pattern don't look squashed in this particular area. Oh, and incidentally, the ends of the gold thread were plunged to the reverse of the work and secured in place once the halo was finished. So um, there were a number of gold threads left hanging loose throughout the working process. Uh, the whole halo took approximately 5 hours and 27 minutes to complete and it used 1 metre 4 centimetres of gold thread and 1 metre 60 centimetres of silk thread, which isn't very much really. I 
Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this short video which has given you some insight into the stitching process. If you've got any questions or comments please add them to the comment, comment section and if you like this and would like to know when future videos go live do subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye!